welcome. You are watching Business Today Television. I am Sakshi Batra. Well, this is a special edition. We've actually seen the RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das deliver uh, the decisions of the RBI's Monetary Policy Committee. And this is a show where we will be decoding all the key announcements that have been made. Remember, there are five key highlights. The repo rate has remained unchanged at 6.5% for the seventh straight time. The RBI has also maintained its stance on withdrawal of accommodation. There is a 5 is to 1 uh, majority decision on keeping the re repo rate or the key policy rate unchanged at this point in time. That's the third key takeaway. The fourth one is that the fiscal year 2025 real GDP growth is seen at 7%. And the fifth key highlight is on the inflation front where FY25 CPI inflation is kept at 4.5%. Many other very, very important details have have been shared before we get on to our guests and the discussion of decoding what does the decision really mean for you out there as retail investors or common investors at large let's quickly listen into what rbi governor shakti kanta das had to say in his speech the mpc also decide after a detailed assessment of the evolving macroeconomic and financial developments and the outlook the reserve bank mpc decided by a majority of 5 to 1 to keep the policy repo rate unchanged at 6.5%. Consequently, the standing deposit facility, that is the SDF, rate remains at 6.25%, and the marginal standing facility, that is the MSF rate, remains at 6. Point MSF rate and the bank rate, they remain at 6.75%. The MPC also decided by a majority of five out of six members to remain focused on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation progressively aligns to the target while supporting growth. So that was the governor and now let's welcome our two very special guests who are joining us on the show to decode the policy findings for us. So Rajni Sina joins in. She's the chief economist at Care Ratings. Very warm good morning to you, ma'am, and thank you so much for taking the time out. Also joining us is Mr. Vivek Kumar. He's the economist at Quant Eco. Welcome to you, sir, as well. I'll begin uh, with you, Rajni. Thank you so much uh, for sparing all that time. Your first take on the policy. Is it uh, absolutely on predictable lines or is there something that has come, come at uh, as a surprise to you in this policy decision? Uh, Sakshi, I would say the policy was very much on expected lines. Market was expecting that RBI will, uh, you know, remain maintain status quo. I think uh, the key takeaway would be, which the RBI governor has been highlighting in the last few meetings, the unwavering commitment to getting inflation to 4% target. I would say that's the main uh, takeaway. And uh, in the speech, RBI governor highlighted that their main concern, core inflation is coming down, services sector is seeing disinflation. The main concern is around any kind of supply side risk to inflation. Hmm. He spoke about increased climate risk in uh, India as well as globally, which could have an impact on uh, uh, food prices. And also, uh, you know, the increased geopolitical risks because of which there are concerns around commodity prices too. So I would say the main takeaway is, uh, you know, this whole focus of RBI on inflation, which is going to continue. And given the fact that growth is healthy, it kind of gives room to RBI to wait and watch. Okay. Uh, Vivek, your first comments. What did you make of uh, the key decisions that have been announced? Uh, was it something that you were expecting that has not come through in the policy statement? Hi, Sakshi. Good morning. Good to be back on the show. So, I would agree with Rajni that it's completely a long expected line. So, for me, this policy stood out as a reiteration of, let's say, the macroeconomic comfort and the resilience that India has been showing, number one. And number two is, again, reiteration of few concerns, especially on the inflation front, which RBI has been repeatedly highlighting for the last few policies. They've been saying that we've kind of won the war or, uh, you know, uh, won the battle, but the war is still uh, out there to be won. They use the analogy of elephant uh, returning to the forest. Yes. <laughs> and they said that the elephant has, they would want the elephant to remain in the forest for a durable basis. So what essentially is saying that, We've covered a major part of the distance as far as the war on inflation is concerned. 
and it's the last mile which needs to be covered. So uh, there is no room for complacency at this time because growth is giving us that comfort. You can still persist with the anti-inflation stance for the time being. And globally also, as far as the key central banks are concerned, especially Federal Reserve, etc., they are not showing any signs of discomfort as far as the slowdown is concerned. In fact, uh, the recent policies made by some of the Fed governors in the last one week probably suggest that there is increased amount of caution on inflation front. So uh, there is credibility at stake from a global monetary policy perspective as well. And the central banks, which we, have, uh, which have done the hard work, especially in the last one and a half years, they would want to ensure that the hard work actually starts to pay them. So from Absolutely. this perspective, status quo is what is maintained and status quo will probably be maintained in the very short term. Okay, Rajni, on inflation, since both of you have highlighted that as uh, the core focus still remaining on the RBI's radar, what uh, the RBI governor did say is that inflation is moving closer to the targets, but the last mile is still looking challenging as of now. Core inflation, like Rajni, you mentioned, uh, the governor said that it's been on a decline for the past nine months, uh, but the RBI, uh, RBI must be actively disinflationary is what he's mentioned as well. He also said that, you know, of course, what uh, Vivek highlighted, that CPI is being seen as the elephant in uh, the room right now, uh, which predicted at 4.5% uh, in FY25, adding that persistent high food inflation impeding CPI is now coming down as well. Fuel has been lower, but it's the supply shocks for sure that need to be under what list. How are you looking at the crude oil prices moving northwards? Is that going to be a key challenge moving forward in the next policy? Is that going to be something that the RBI governor will keenly look at? Over the expecting 4.5% for FI25. Rajni, I think there is some kind of an audio disruption that we are finding in. Could you try to say something again? Because we lost your audio in between. And, uh, if we look at CPI projection, RBI's projection for next year, it is at a benign 4.5%. Uh, if we see core inflation has been going down, so has been the case with services inflation. The main concern is around food inflation, which still persists at high levels of around 7.5% or so. And specifically, if you look at some of the items of daily consumption, like vegetable prices, pulses prices, they remain high. Uh, but at the same time, I must mention that cereal prices, given the supply side intervention that the government has been doing, we have seen uh, moderation in cereal price inflation. So I think what RBI is doing is being very, very cautious of any kind of risk that can emerge going forward. Because if we assume a normal monsoon, we are expecting food inflation to also moderate going forward. So, uh, but I think RBI is just being cautious because as far as climate risks are concerned, it's very difficult to say what's going to uh, happen going forward. And as we have seen in the past, these climate risks are just growing, not just in India, but globally, which has been putting pressure on food prices. And we have seen that in the last two years. And like I mentioned before, the other big concern is uh, on commodity prices, the, you know, other commodities like crude oil prices. While overall, you know, our expectation is that global demand is going to remain weak in 2024 also. Hence, there will not be demand side pressure on uh, uh, commodity prices, including crude oil prices. But it's difficult to predict what's going to happen on supply side, given the increased geopolitical conflicts that we've been seeing around us. So in the given backdrop, I think RBI is being cautious, even though they have given a projection of 4.5% inflation for next year. Right. Vivek, do you think at least the indications made uh, by the RBI as far as uh, early indication of a normal monsoon is concerned, uh, the rural demand and the private consumption trends, at least are those going to give some kind of comfort as far as uh, both growth and, uh, uh, you know, a lid on the upside on the inflation is concerned? So I think from a balanced perspective, uh, what is comforting is the projected trajectory, of course, which is at 4.5% on inflation. That kind of remained un unchanged between the last policy review in February and the current policy review in April. 
what has in, intermittently changed is that we now see few amber flags so i would still not call them red flags because uh, they are not in the red zone yet so oil mm. prices have climbed up by almost uh, 8 to 9 dollars in a span of two weeks and the imd has come out with an advisory against the possibility of some uh, heat waves so basically what it means is that the entire april to june quarter could see a higher than normal temperature and higher than normal temperature while might not impact your rabi output because most of your rabi output is already uh, sown uh, it's just the harvesting which is left which is something which the governor also mentioned where it can potentially have an impact is on the horticulture and horticulture is where you see fruits and vegetables coming in and uh, creating a lot of volatility in your in your cpi basket we saw that playing out in fy24 and if the heat waves turn out to be severe and if they turn out to be prolonged then you could potentially see that as a risk so rbi uh, is is kind of contemplating that risk and also banking on the uh, the possibility that the la nina conditions which are expected yeah. to set in by june should augur well for a normal monsoon so if there is an upside risk to food prices in the very short term they can potentially get offset by a normal monsoon outcome right. so net net you could see the upside and the downside risk kind of balancing each other out so as of now we are in a stable situation so you could argue that risks are balanced you have both upside as well as downside risks to cpi inflation as well as to Fair point. Let's also understand on the growth. I mean, uh, Rajni, was there an expectation that at least the growth forecast would be uh, perhaps tinkered on the upside? And is that something that uh, you know something that is missing from the RBI governor this time around? Because the projections are absolutely same at seven percent at FY25. Uh, uh, how would you really look at the growth? Uh, uh, you know, picture uh, shaping up now. So RBI's growth projection at seven percent for FY25 is uh, in line with our projection. I think the market started expecting uh, an upward revision to the growth projection because of the very good uh, uh, recent high-frequency economic indicators that we have been seeing. But I would say that seven percent is a very good number, and um, I think we should be able to achieve it. And I feel that yes, there are chances that probably. the number may turn out to be a little higher than 7% but right now we are also sticking to the uh, 7% uh, projection the as far as growth is concerned the main thing to watch out for is what's going to happen on consumption mm. we've already seen in uh, fi24 that there is a wide divergence that has come up in terms of the growth that we have seen in investment and consumption So consumption has just grown in FI as per FI 24 estimate. Consumption has grown by three percent, as against much higher number of seven percent or so that we were seeing pre-COVID. So I would say that's the main concern. And again, uh, even in consumption, what we will be looking at is as to when and how does the consumption growth become more broad-based, because rural consumption has been weak in this year. But here also, you know, if we if I look at some of the you know recent data that has been coming from uh, which gives an indication of what's happening to rural demand even in terms of rural demand we are seeing uh, an improvement you know if i look at some of the indicators like the two wheeler sales that has shown an improvement in the last few months if i uh, look at you know fmcg volume growth uh, from the rural uh, area which is you know this data i am quoting what you know we have seen in a nielsen report that is also showing that in the second half of the year FMCG volume growth has shown an uptick in the second half of the year. So I think on the rural front also we are seeing signs of improvement. A lot will depend on monsoon. If yeah. we have a normal monsoon going forward this year, we could see an improvement in rural demand, which should help in a more broad-based consumption recovery. And right. just to mention another critical thing will will be what happens on private investment. that's yeah. also important that it picks up in a meaningful way in fy25 and i would say here also we are indeed seeing some signs of improvement happening in some of the sectors like steel cement auto renewables so we are seeing signs of pick up in private investment too
Okay, so both private consumption and uh, private investment going to be key uh, factors to watch out for. Vivek, your own thoughts on the growth uh, picture that you see shaping up? What is your own projection? Is it in line with the RBI, Kapna? Broadly in line, Sakshi, we are at 6.8% as far as GDP is concerned. While optically, you know, if you compare FI24 and FI25, it would appear that there is some sort of a moderation because FI24, the numbers which have been pegged by the NSO is at 7.6%. But a large part of this moderation would be statistical. By statistical, I mean the value-added component will probably see a little bit of a decline because there is an expectation that global commodity prices are going to be higher this year hmm. and uh, there will be a little bit of squeeze on margin. So your value-added component will come down. And also to just take you back last year, as in financial year 23-24, there was a wedge between uh, GBA and GDP. Slightly technical because it was created by the net indirect taxes, which was extremely wide. And this is something which is not normal. So we would expect some sort of a normalcy to start getting back, and that statistical wedge should come off. So accounting for these statistical anomalies, the GDP growth picture actually gives you a, a roughly flattish view. So we are expecting a 6.8, uh, broadly in line with what the RBI is saying as at 7%. Okay. Rajni, anything else that you uh, would want to point out as far as the liquidity uh, you know, conditions are concerned and how the RBI is planning to move forward with it? So, uh, RBI has been indicating uh, in the past also, including this meeting, that uh, they would look at maintaining liquidity at a, you know, at an appropriate level so that it doesn't come in the way of uh, good credit demand, which we are expecting going forward. And at the same time, it is not inflationary. Mm. So, the critical thing to watch out for is what happens with the kind of strong FII inflows that we are expecting in FI25. FI24, as RBI governor highlighted, was very good in terms of FII inflows. We got more than $40 billion of FII inflows as against outflows that we had seen in the previous two years. And uh, it is the very strong FII inflows is expected to continue in FI25 with the inclusion of uh, Indian government bond in the global indices. So in that sense, it will be very critical for RBI to manage that liquidity appropriately. And it will mm. also be very critical for us to get be a little more vigilant on this front because, you know, FII inflows being good is uh, fine. But at the same time, we need to be cautious because FII inflows are volatile in nature. So it also kind of highlights the risk of outflows happening going forward if things turn adverse. Hmm. Okay, so we've discussed largely growth, uh, inflation and the liquidity aspect. Vivek, first to you as far as what the uh, you know interest rate path really looks like from here on. Are we going to be seeing um, the governor really preferring or the MPC preferring to stay higher for longer now? Um, you know, because there was a mention uh, where that uh, globally the interest rate cut uh, would be perhaps delayed than what was earlier anticipated. We heard it from the comments by Fed also so earlier and uh, now the governor also hinting on to that what does it mean what is your own expectation of the rate reversal now happening rate cycle reversal now happening well we would probably use the phrase stable for longer because uh, we've been staying pat at six and a half since february of 23 and yeah. it's been 14 months that we've not touched that rate the expectation is that we are likely to remain in that scenario in the near term Hmm. So, uh, we would expect the, uh, the first change in the repo rate to uh, most likely happen in the month of August. Again, this is subject to the assumption that monsoons play out uh, pretty normally, both in terms of the quantum as well as in terms of spread, because that will be crucial in offsetting the, the above normal temperatures that one, are, one is likely to see in the first quarter of this financial year. So if that were to happen and if the Federal Reserve does deliver one rate cut before August, then uh, the room to, to start delivering the first rate cut in August will, uh, will be much widely opened. We also need to see here that RBI is forecasting 3.8% inflation for Q2 of, of the current financial year. That's actually dipping a tad below the 4% uh, mark. Although they have been saying that we want to be there on a sustainable basis, what exactly they mean by sustainable, we, we, we don't really know. So it, what probably they have in mind is, is that they need to be as close as possible 
to the four percent inflation mark. And on a on a on a medium term basis, by August you'll also have two subsequent quarters of inflation forecast from the RBI. If they are in the in the region of four four and a half percent, I think that will exude much more confidence in going ahead and cutting rates. Uh, to also point it out that one out of six MPC members for the second time has voted for a rate yes. cut. Yes. So we need we need essentially one or two more uh, MPC members to start uh, moving towards the dovish side. Hopefully, do not materialize. I mean, the upside risks do not materialize. Commodity prices are by large range bound. Then it would not be difficult to assume such a scenario to play out. Okay, fair point. Uh, Rajni, what about you, August or later? So, uh, we are also expecting that uh, rate cut is a possibility in the second half of fiscal year. There are two things that uh, it will be contingent on. One is that uh, inflation continues to moderate, specifically inflation. So, here the assumption of normal monsoon will be critical. The other important thing is what uh, happens in U.S. So, you know, increasingly there is this talk about what if U.S. does not cut in the current year. Will RBI still go ahead and cut the policy rate here? I see one. Uh, most probably I feel that U.S. economy, U.S. Fed will go for a rate cut in the second half of the year. Uh, but at the same time, I feel that even if U.S. economy, even if U.S. Fed delays the rate cut and mm -hmm. continues with, you know, U.S. interest rates remaining higher for longer, I think there's still room for RBI to go ahead and go for a shallow interest rate cut by the towards the second half of the fiscal year, as long as food inflation moderates and inflation, you know, CPI inflation comes down on a durable basis, which the RBI governor has been indicating. If that happens, I think RBI would still go ahead and cut rates because I think, you know, uh, RBI should look at and will start looking at a real rate of interest of around 1 to 1.5 percent, which I feel gives a scope of a shallow rate cut of around 50 basis point in the current fiscal year towards the second half of the year. Okay, point taken. We make some of the other measures also that were announced just towards the fag end that also interest a large part of the viewers because it largely is related to digital payments and reforms being brought about to augment or facilitate some of them. I'll read out some uh, measures. So RBI is going to be looking at launching a mobile app to facilitate retail participation in government securities market as well. Uh, UPI access for prepaid instruments through third party apps at present only UPI uh, ca payment can be made only using web or mobile uh, app as well so that's going to be perhaps changing RBI is going to be notifying a scheme for trading on sovereign green bonds at the international financial services center that's another thing that has been spoken of as well and very importantly what the RBI did say as a, uh, you know an uh, indication for the banks and NBFCs and other financial institutions the RBI come did mention that uh, these institutions need to give highest priority to the governance and adherence to regulatory uh, guidelines as well and how these institutions should be mindful of these aspects. He did say that the RBI will continue to constructively engage in a dialogue with all these stakeholders. Of course, we've seen a lot of developments take place in the last two months uh, before the, uh, you know, uh, of course, between the previous policy and now. How would you really look at some of these measures and what does it mean for the larger part of your, our audiences? I think on the regulatory part, uh, this is, again, uh, a Probably it was a medium for, for the RBA governor to uh, come out in the public and, and reiterate uh, whatever has happened, especially in the last two months, uh, mm -hmm. pertaining to a particular particular bank. And they want to reiterate and make uh, it absolutely clear that the regulatory guidelines, especially with if you are a deposit-taking institution, and it has to be adhered to uh, completely. So there is no leeway, there is no dilution in terms of interpretation and as far as the execution is concerned. That's number one. Uh, number two, on the payments front, it is interesting because, um, you know, Sachi, I always believe that RBI as an institution uh, has is probably one of the best as far as the yeah. payments ecosystem is concerned. It's not just RBI, probably the, uh, the other institutions also in the vicinity, in the pay payments ecosystem vicinity that do contribute towards that. And we, as, an, as a country, have, have st now started exporting uh, the global payments in the form of UPI to the rest of the world. So we are already the best. And 
we are getting better. Absolutely, Rajni. Last, yeah, yeah. Please continue. So, what RBI is doing in terms of, let's say, introducing an app would probably uh, excite uh, slightly more informed market participants like uh, me and you with respect to retail participation. And it's a good thing because it's it's something which is which is only going to help widen the uh, the government bond market. Okay, point taken right there. Rajni, last word to you. Uh, what other key takeaway should one be mindful of with the kind of statement that has come about? Of course, will, there will be a detailed press conference and more details will come out from that. But uh, for the average viewer out there, what's the message that you'd like to share? Rajni, there is some kind of an audio issue again. Could you please uh, check that? Um, so no, the main I think thing there I... is some disturbance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we could hear you. Please go ahead. I think the main takeaway, like I mentioned earlier, is that um, RBI has reiterated or highlighted that growth is on a firm footing. Uh, but at the same time, we need to remain cautious because there are, uh, you know, concerns lurking in the form of, you know, geopolitical rifts, supply side bottlenecks that can emerge going forward. Inflation has been moderating, but again, with food inflation remaining high, RBI is concerned that it shouldn't get passed on to higher inflationary expectations because that's very critical. Because here, when you are talking about food inflation, that's something which has very high impact on household inflationary expectations. Uh, hence, RBI will be cautious on that front. But uh, again, if we see a normal monsoon this year, we could see food inflation also further moderating. So I think that's the key takeaway, uh, healthy growth, inflation moderating, but we need to remain cautious. From my side, I feel that yes, uh, there could be a rate cut going forward. But if you see from the RBI statements, they have given no indication of that because they want to be just you know cautious and ensure that market does not take anything into account which doesn't actually materialize going forward. So in that sense, they have not even changed the stance and they have continued with the stance of withdrawal of accommodation. But having said that, I feel there is a scope of interest rate cut towards the end of the fiscal year. Okay, well, on that note, thank you so much, Rajne, and thank you so much, Vivek, for being with us on this very special edition, Decoding and Simplifying for all our viewers what the RBI policy uh, decisions have been. Uh, truly, uh, you know, appreciate all your uh, presence and, uh, you know, you sparing your time for our viewers on this very important day. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this conversation. The stock markets have actually turned flat. They've, uh, they've uh, sprung up from the low point of the day. Uh, 22,500 on the Nifty. The Nifty Bank is into the green as well. So uh, some kind of a positive indication. The markets have taken in positively what the RBI governor's statements have been. If you look at um, the PSU banks, the realty space, um, uh, you know, the Nifty Bank and the private banks, PSU banks, all of them and even the financial services. They're inching higher in trade, giving us an indication that the markets have accepted uh, with both hands what the IBI governor has mentioned in terms of uh, the interest rates, the projections on growth and inflation, and of course the commentary around what is to be expected going forward from here. With that, we wrap up this very special conversation, but do stay glued on to Business Today TV as we will continue to get you um, all the live data from RBI's press conference from the headquarters in Mumbai. And of course, a further detailed decoding of the Monetary Policy Committee's decisions this time around. Stay with us. Two stock ideas that you will be going with today. Yes, uh, so we are recommending two stock, uh, one from the IT space. Uh, now, persistent, we are liking very good at current market price. Reason being, uh, the persistent is giving a breakout from the falling uh, trend line or we can uh, we can also say there is a falling channel breakout on persistent. We are seeing some short covering uh, based on